2.2 square kilometers. It's located in Mandawa City in the province of Cebu. And uh, the, the issues I want to talk about first is like the uh, Botuanan River. So the first is the pollution of the river, which borders the barangay at the north, and as well as the poor drainage system that's caused by the pollution of the river. So the Butuanan River stretches uh, Metro Cebu and borders Barangay Kabangkalan, as you can see here. It's at the like the north side of the barangay. It has been uh, heavily deteriorated and polluted for several years now, and the clogging of its waterways is uh, due to the improper waste disposal. It has caused a severe drainage problem, especially in Sitio Pilit, which is around this area that I highlighted here. And efforts have been made by the DNR to rehabilitate the river uh, over the years, but they have failed because of poor implementation. And viewing from the broader perspective of uh, the river, its weakness lies in the pollution, of course, and the drainage problem. But um, there's a strength because uh, if the river becomes rehabilitated, it has potential for an open public space and also like recreational use, which is really like needed in this area of the barangay. And then the, the second issue is the traffic along ML Kazan Avenue, which runs across which runs across the long axis of the barangay. It's like highlighted here. And though the traffic is not very heavy compared to other places in Cebu, uh, it still becomes an issue, especially when flooding occurs during the strong rains and typhoons. Uh, these points towards the, the weakness of the road, ne road network, though it's also a strength since there are several commercial establishments uh, catered to the needs of the locals that are easily accessible and available running along the stretch of the um, road. And the prominent social economic issue that I found is the poor housing conditions, as you can see here. Uh, most of the land of, in the barangay is residential. I can show the, this is the zoning map. You can see most of it is residential. And you can see like this is where the, um, the uh, city of Pilit is, where it's most affected by the pollution. Hello, Nathan. Why am I audio? Hello, sir. And, uh, okay, it's back. Okay. You continue. It could be your Twitch taking up your bandwidth. <laughs> it's like it's like automatic. Wrong. It like won't close. Ah, okay. And now, okay, okay now. Uh, okay? Padayan has social economic issues. Okay, sure, sure. So, and then see that the substandard below substandard living conditions. Uh, these, as you can see, I can. Uh, show here it's like there's a lot of like clustered um houses and there in these houses there's no clear sanitation system uh settlers are prompted to go to the river to use as public toilets um garbage disposal and, leave, and even laundry areas and so this is like the this is the problem that that connects back to the butuanan river uh pollution and so um Yeah, Nathan, there's really something wrong with your audio today. So I'll just get back to you. We'll probably like present uh, later after we go through the other four. Okay. Okay, permission will cut out. So we'll just move on to the next. Okay, sir. And then I'll call you back later. Okay. Uh, Declaro, your audio was fine. Can you uh, please share your screen? Okay, sir. Sige, go ahead. So 
So my presentation is about um, the urban issues of Lapu-Lapu City and primarily here in Barangay Pusok, uh, the place where I live. So the physical issues of the city are, so starting with the strengths is most of, um, a lot of tourists flock to the city for like historical cultural landmarks and especially the beaches. So the weaknesses of the city is traffic congestion, uh, there's flooding, pollution, power outages, sanitation problems, degraded environmental quality, garbage disposal, and climate crisis. And the socioeconomic issues, having strengths as local culture uh, with the festivals like the annual festival of Santo Nino and Virgen de Rigla. And there's also commercial opportunities, especially in the industrial parks here in the city. And for weaknesses, there is a lot of poverty incidents, informal settlers, homelessness, and crime and inclusivity. So I'll just be quick with the description and the discussion of the city. So Barangay Pusuk and the city as a whole relatively share the same issues. And the city of Lapu Lapu is famous to tourists for beaches and diving spots. This created a market for businesses such as hotels, restaurants, creating jobs and income to the city. The city also has three primary industrial parks, which is the MAPS 1, MAPS 2 and CLIP, Cebu Life Industrial Park. Because of the job opportunities, this drove a rise in housing. In Barangay Pusuk, it mostly consists of residential lots, seen here in the picture. And this is due to the Barangay's, Barangay's close proximity to MEPS 1. Generally, the city has a lot of high dens density housing developments like condos and subdivisions. With the increase in population, this also causes traffic congestion. Uh, the city must drastically address this issue with comprehensive, sustainable, and pedestrian oriented solutions. Starting off with infrastructure, there is clear evidence of poor urban design and planning. The city is generally built for cars like the rest of Cebu and the country. Roads, not only in Pusok, must give adequate pavements for pedestrian and cyclists. Cebu in general has poor public transportation. There should be more public transportation choices like buses and trains. PJs and tricycles cause traffic because these vehicles have no designated stops. They stop whenever um, a passenger wants to ride or, or gets off. With proper allocation for stops, this can help with traffic congestions. And there should also be stricter policies on owning private vehicles because ma a majority of the causes of traffic is because of private vehicles. This nation needs better solutions on social housing, migration of population from rural areas, and the issue on wealth and equality has fueled the issue of homelessness and informal settling. This problem can be solved by government-funded projects on social housing. Because urbanization in Cebu has become an urban jungle, in Lapu-Lapu Lapu City, there are barely open parks. In Barangay, Barangay Pasok, there's only one park and it is below the Marcelo Fernand Bridge. This pushed people to satisfy the need of recreation in shopping malls. The city must provide more green spaces. On some occasions, there are power outages. This, ca this can be because of main power supplies issues or damage to live power lines running all around the city. The city should clean up dangerous twisted and exposed jumbled electrical cables. This can be this can become a hazard during natural calamities like typhoons. Flooding can be an issue in some areas as they lack proper sewage and solid waste management. The city should provide a working sewage line and sewage treatment plan. Citizens should be educated to properly dispose of their garbage through recycling and proper waste segregation. This managed solid waste can clog up canals that are already poorly functioning. The problem on waste pollution can be addressed by solving its contributors. This would mean solving initial problems like from a settler, solid waste management, sewage, and stronger environmental policies. A threat to this tropical nation is climate crisis. Cebu must prepare to mitigate future sea level rise, stronger typhoons, and tougher heat. This will need innovation in technology and better policies. Sustainability must be kept in mind. Crime rate in Cebu, uh, especially Lapu Lapu, is moderate to high. This can be from drugs, robbery, theft, corruption, bribery, and more. This can primarily be solved through education, stronger policies, gun control, target inequality, and improving quality of life in general. Strong issue, a strong issue not only in this barangay, nor this city, nor this region, is inclusivity. Persons with disabilities are people that are less prioritized when they are one of the neediest. As simple as going through the sidewalk that they are not being thought about then built environment here must cater to all. Even with national building codes, some places are substandard. The government must do their job fairly and work with professionals and the academics solving the unconnected web issues that we face in the rapid growing urban environment. 
they must offer better funding and rating policies. They must keep in mind what, the, what their stakeholders need and what the bat needs, which is sustainability. So an example of how these issues can be seen is too close to where I live here in what you call this Lapu-Lapu City Hall Access Road. This place during like weekdays, especially today, um, a lot of people come here to to do like government services like the LTO or processes or even to the um, the Hall of Justice where the court is. And the problem here is that there's a lot of traffic here coming here and jeepneys stop usually anywhere here. But they try to stop here um, at the end of this avenue. So a lot of traffic won't accumulate here across this U-turn, around this U-turn. And the problem also here is how dusty and how bad the uh, sewage problem also is. So um, recently, uh, there was a construction on having a sewage line, but I also don't know where it will flow to. I think it flows right out to the sea. And yes, sir, I think um, a good solution here would be like building a parking building because this this place here usually is usually packed with cars and a lot of them are like double parking and some of them cause traffic here as since like mostly around here where there's a lot of like cars turning u-turning and parking like all of the street oh, the entire side of the avenue here is full of parked cars Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. This is just an example. Okay. Uh, where is this again? Um, this is the Barangay Hall? Yes, sir. This is at the edge of the boundary of Barangay Puso. And this is Barangay, I think. Any, any, I mean, uh, the name of this building, Bitao? Which building, sir? Kana, the big orange one. This is the Lapu-Lapu City Hall, sir. This is the City ah, Hall. Okay. It's, it's included. May go siya sa Lapu-Lapu City Hall ang Barangay Puso? It's right here. It's right here on the edge, sir, but I don't I don't know, sir. It's actually ah, okay. right at the center. The edge is right here. Uh, could you go and zoom out a bit? I'm trying to find this on my Google Maps. But <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then, okay, it's like that. I just look for Lapu-Lapu City Hall directions. Should I stop um, presenting, sir? Uh, no, no, let's keep it there. Uh, I just want to orient myself. Lapu Lapu City Hall. It can actually get very chaotic uh, just, during like around lunchtime, morning till late lunch. Mm -hmm. It's just barely outside the boundary, Jun. Yes, sir. Uh, okay, okay. So uh, what stood out to me was that uh, you mentioned how crime rate was uh, moderate to high in Lapu-Lapu, but um, yes, what is the, the baseline for that? Like just based on your research, like compared to everywhere else in the Philippines, um, <laughs> what do you call I this? I forgot where I took it. I have to look for it again. Uh, so based, just, uh, you can just say like based on your experience, uh, generally it's not safe to Kuan, walk around in this area. Not entirely in this area, sir. I know, I like mean, in Barangay like Pusok in general. Like when you walk around, I mean, it's relatively safe, man, sir. But I'm mm. not sure with the other areas. But there's a lot of like crime, lang. There's like crimes like drugs, lang, sir, or robbery. Ah, uh, you would hear it like in your neighborhood. Yes, yeah, sir. Especially like on houses that are very clustered together. Ah, okay, okay. That's like uh, breaking and entering, stuff like that? Yes, sir. Ah, okay, okay. So, yeah, that's what happens. We have like a lot of people like living very closely together. So, okay. Very good. Um, oh, yeah, my question. Um, hmm. I think we asked pretty much the same question again because it's really the only question that's the, like... How, how architecture will yeah, answer. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I put it here, sir, around this area, sir, this is like more like a compound of like government services. So like a lot of people would flock here and most of these people would bring their cars. That's why I said earlier that 
it's, it can get very uh, okay. chaotic during the day. Uh, uh, John, does it have to be in this area? But like, if you could build something that would help Barangay Pusok, what would you build? What do you think? Uh, what kind of building do you think Barangay Pusok needs the most? Um, I guess it would be social housing, sir. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these houses are actually built, some of the houses are like built by the sea, sir. And they have the like poor conditions, like um, they don't even have like proper sewage systems, sir. And there's like pollution accumulating here by the sea, sir. It's kind of dark now. Yeah, but uh, I also it will also help solve like housing problem because by Pusok, there's like a lot of industry parks, industrial parks, and offering a lot of jobs, and like people flock here, and people live here to live close to the industrial parks there to work. Housing yeah. would greatly benefit. Uh, okay, okay, that's very good. Uh, I'm just very curious. Uh, I'm taking up too much time. What is that like open parcel of land there? Kanang next Where's to like it? water area kana yeah this is yeah. actually a subdivision sir but it's it's mostly empty i don't uh, think there's a lot of houses sold here it, yeah but there's it like a subdivision like here yeah and around it is like surrounded by kwanlang for most settlers i think that's very likely a new kanang social uh socialized housing development that's still in construction so very good uh, I think I saw an Taiwan article for this. I might need to dig that up. So thank you. Very good presentation, John. John, okay, I'll need to note it over here. And then you can take the seat work because you're done. <laughs> you can take the seat work on the Canvas page. Okay, um, let's check in with Nathan again. Nathan, how are you? Okay, na bang internet? Hello, sir. Get out. That's fine. Down. I can hear you. Yep. Does it sound fine, sir? Yeah, it sounds fine. Let's go to the issues, the, the last part about the uh, clustered houses, and then I'll ask you the question What does uh, Kabangkalan Mandawe? I think there's Kabangkalan Cebu as well. I'm not sure. Um, what does your area need? Like, uh, what building type do you need? Do you need more residential space? Do you need more institutional, like schools or hospitals? Based on your observation, what do you think your barangay needs? Uh, based on my observation, sir, I think like the one thing that really needs to be solved is the is the housing. Like, like we need like like proper planning of housing and also like maybe like housing developments, especially mm -hmm. like where the sitios are, because it's really become like a lifestyle already. That since or or like even like a like a culture within the area because. They, because there's no like um, proper sanitation system, so the people are um, they feel prompted to go to the the natural waterway, which is the. Mm. Okay. Butuan and River, and then that's of the living conditions of the um, of the people in the barangay will be improved. Also, their their quality of life. But also the Butuanan River can can take can take a step forward into its rehabilitation and proper implementation measures can be um, implemented already at that stage. Okay, very good. I also like how you highlighted how housing will not only solve the population problem, like the quality of life, having mm -hmm. people live in bet live in better spaces but just improving that one aspect and also improve the environmental aspect of the Butuanan River. Because like uh, the people living there are the ones who are polluting the river. So it has that kind of systematic um, impact. Yeah, and then it also like, it, it, it goes back to them as well, sir, because well, because since the um, the Butuanan River, like it's, it's no longer like a proper drainage system. A lot of the times the houses also like um, get a lot of flooding, and then also like in turn it it leads to have it leads to like the people like experiencing a lot of waterborne diseases like cholera um diarrhea dengue so yeah yeah i can really see that area is very dengue prone mm -hmm. okay very good thank you for that 
All right, next, let's move okay. on. Because to... Sorry again, sir, about the um, internet. Uh, no problem. That's always an uh, issue with online learning. But at least we can use maps right away. Okay, next we have Agalion. Are you there? Uh, yes, sir. My present. Sige, present lang. Also, for those who are not presenting again and who are done presenting, uh, please answer the seat work. Just so like you guys can... Uh, so I can check whether you read the article or the module. <laughs> there will be another one later, like uh, for next meeting, and then same process like that when we do the reporting. And while we're reporting, other people will be doing the seat work. So on multitask, but okay, Maasin City, yes. So makita na kong screen, sir. Yes, kita na. Okay. So good afternoon, sir. So I live in Maasin City, and its area is about. 212 kilometers squared and a little background for Mazin is it is a developing city in southern Leyte that has very few commercial establishments, outdated drainage system that is only good for a municipality and has a narrow national road and for the conditions of the city we will look into the maps so here in the city map there is a rightmost map this red part here is the city proper Gamay Rakaayo so below is the tening, akong zoom in ang city proper map this is the only area that has the main commercial and institutional um, establishments, but the commercial establishments here are not 100% commercial. Kay mostly, kani mga gagmay gagmay na koan kay mga houses rani sila nagi convert ilang ground floor into kanang commercial, and the rest kay residential na. Oh yeah, so, uh, J, how big is the area? Is sa city sir, kay koan uh, 200 about ah, 200 okay. kilometers. Thank you. And can you zoom in? Then. So, summary for the population data is that um, ang regional, provincial, and city map kay ning reduce ilang growth rate to almost 0% na lang as of 2020. So, um, ang rason, um, the reason for that can be traced in the issues. So, our socioeconomic issues is, I mean, for the strength, is we have a consistent sidewalk. So, gamay rajod kayo among pedestrian and vehicular accidents there, and it is also very safe to roam around the city because sa kaning sidewalk, and we are also pollution free, and also for the weakness, also um, I think maon yung mga rason na muhawa ang mga tao and to live elsewhere because we have very few commercial establishments, so walay potential for professionals and college degree na mga trabaho and and also we have very few access to healthcare kanang about three hospitals ra and troublesome electricity and internet maybe because kay dependent ang among power source in sa Ormoc and for our physical issues is we have a small area for city proper development maorone flooding and narrow national road so um, strategies to solve these issues by road widening, plantation and hydro seeding to flood prone areas and also avoid clustering of single zoning category in the development. So like even distribute sila and also to avoid traffic. And for the city development must go horizontal. Okay. City development will be hor horizontal or do you mean vertical? Um, kanang left to right, kay, left to right, kay diaganan musuja inland. Um, ang kung vertical sir, like up and down kay mountainous naman. Adi ba? Um, usually, kung pasabot sa horizontal is kanang sprawling. Ang vertical is like not up and down sa map, pero elevation bitaw. Uh, so ang pas ang question ako, do you mean do you want buildings to remain the same height and spread horizontally, or do you want buildings to become taller? To answer, kanang the same height lang. Hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, wh why man? Why the same height? Kay I mean, na may ambot lang sa na building dere few buildings na ta taas ilang heights and murag na alkansi sila sa kuan income or halin okay gamay raman sa kayong mga tao diri very interesting uh, what what are those this is like something na um uh, kind of related to koan architecture and all but mostly related to like uh planning 
Um, what are the kinds of buildings na tall in height? So uh, typically in urban planning and architecture, there's three types. There's low rise, which is um, below five stories. There's mid rise, uh, above five, but below 12. And high rise is anything higher than 15. So in your area, uh, have you seen buildings na mufit, mufit sa mid to high rise or gamayra? Na sir, about one or two lang na mid rise, walay high rise. <laughs> okay, that that could be very interesting. Um, okay, uh, please continue. Sorry. <laughs> um. So, um. Oh, mo suggest po ko kay for the Samong City kay mo build og mga IT or kanang call center na establishments kay mostly mga tao dire kay mo travel elsewhere or dia sa Cebu para mag call center or IT so kung naana dire then siguro dili na nimo gamay among population kani okay uh, is that all Yes, sir. Okay, very good. It's still increasing for definitely a lot lower sa 2015 to 2020. And I think a big culprit for that is COVID. So, nga uli sila sa other areas sa Um, What do you call this? So, that's very interesting. Like, you have the strengths of consistent streets. And then I'll just ask the general question. Uh, architecturally, what kind of building do you think? Oh, yeah, I already mentioned uh, the IT buildings. Oh, sir. Mm hmm Pero ang, ang question niya, do you think, uh, follow-up question to that, do you think the people, there are places where people can learn how to do IT and um, sort of uh, BPOs type na trabaho or are they learning somewhere else? Um, siguro, okay na na sir, kay most sa mga tao diri kay mo skuila sila to kanang tarong ng universities mo gawas diri sa maasin wa tug sibo then mo then mo balik ra sila diri og mm -hmm. kung makakita sila gmayo na trabaho kung wala then dili na sila mo balik yeah so that is a very interesting point and this is not something that will like uh, i will deduct from your kuan from your score for in general in general um for there to be it centers there must be kanang IT educational facility. So there must be one. Um, what are there like university schools in your one in your area? Well, sir, na ara sa Northern Leyte. Yeah. So this is um, this is a kanang uh, what do you call this? Before you can set up like commercial establishments, you need to train people to one to work in those commercial establishments. Kay ang typical behavior patterns of mga tao is where they school, where they learn, that's usually where they work put. So, Kuan, um, this is something, this is very interesting that wasn't really discussed in other presentations. But uh, when you get to like fourth year, you'll be handling um, sort of these kinds of projects, like urban planning projects. So in identifying the architectural solution, uh, generally, you would want to train people in that area before they work in that area so um more more likely some maasin city specifically the reason why people are leaving is uh number one good um education facilities and then because cebu already or like cebu or manila already has those um it facilities or whatever like um businesses whatever they learn they can already practice there so that's why people are being more attracted to uh, those larger cities. So very good. Uh, uh, this is very interesting. I also like the way that you use um, infographics or McLaragut and strengths and weaknesses. Thank you very much, Jay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, very good. And a point out to Nato. Okay. All right. I'll just note down your score over here on paper. So, okay. Much easier for me. Next, we have uh, Go Faith. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. And then let me put down the names of the next students who will present. One, two, three, four. 
Okay, I can see your screen. Uh, these students are uh, Go Willeme, Gonzaga Ryan, Mendoza Rachel, um, Mercado V. I forgot your first. Uh, please start preparing now. Uh, go ahead, uh, Faith. Yep. Uh, okay. So, Busay is a mountainous barangay located in Cebu's highlands. It is a mostly residential area with a few commercial establishments located within the barangay, as you can see in the zoning map. It has a few uh, red commercial areas, but mostly it's really um, either like a subdivision here in Busay Highland or a subdivision here in Mar Luisa or in like smaller informal settlements um, around the barangay. So we can see from the map that it's located in a mountainous area of Cebu. So if we look at this map, we can see that Busay is easily accessible to the city, yet it also has like a uh a lot more space compared to the rest of the barangays in the city center it's a nine kilometer nine square kilometer na barangay and it has only one main road network that connects Cebu city to the rest of the barangays in the highlands so these barangays here like babag talubog sirao um these are all being connected by the Cebu trans central highway which is um sometimes problematic since this is only a two-lane highway and oftentimes it could get um there's like uh, traffic congestion or like um uh, vehicular accidents and actually my mom just told me she just came in like five minutes ago she told me that there were two posts that fell somewhere in this area so they had to do like a complete u-turn to get back home mm -hmm. so that's like it's still ongoing these problems and um, there are two like main physical issues in Busai. The first is the ge geographical features, which is the mountainous terrain. And the second is the lack of proper infrastructure, which is the um, Cebu Trans Central Highway. So as we can see in this graph in the table, the population of, of Barangay Busai has really spiked in the past five years. So if we look here, it's like a steady increase. But this area is that uh, this um, past five years has been the um, a sudden increase in population. So if we look at the table, we can see in numerical form that um, Busay has really been growing a lot faster compared to the um, city, regional, and national average. So mm. five point ninety two and compared to zero point ninety three, one point eighty eight. So we can really see how the increase in population has been affecting the barangay so because also that uh, another issue sa katong mountainous terrain is that there's a lot of water runoff and landslides which are really um, important issues that need to be um, addressed here in Pusay so there's also sometimes it's difficult to have uh, reliable electricity power cell service especially if like as I said a while ago two of the posts fell so uh, these are still issues that we have to address. So in terms of the socioeconomic issues, there are three that I was able to really pinpoint. The first is the uh, educational institutions, second is the healthcare, and third is the location of the Barangay Hall. So first, the elementary school. Actually, this school was um, affected by a landslide in 2015. So it was um, moved to a smaller sports complex around here. And then this sports complex also had a landslide. So um, <laughs> afterwards, yes, afterwards, um, they were able to rebuild the school. And um, after that, the students and teachers, what's this? they planted around 60 seedlings as a way to like um, educate the next generation, saying that this is, we really have to take care of our environment. So it's good that the schools have been teaching that to the students. and. In terms of the healthcare, there is no hospitals or clinics within the barangay. So this is another issue, especially since the population has been increasing. It's already 19,000 um, residents here in Busay. And then for the barangay hall, if we look at the this Google Maps, I'm not sure if it can be seen. I don't think it's seen. Anyway, um, if you look at the uh, Google Maps, I can't open it right now, but the barangay hall is located somewhere down here, pa. So, 
I think that's another issue because you can't the officials can't really see the problems if they're not in they're not in the like problematic areas especially since this is a lot more populated compared to the actual barangay busais na area so it's very different conditions from what i can observe so because of this there's a lot of like um there's they don't really have strict implementation of like setbacks or like um off street park or like parking or uh, illegal parking so you should, this is supposed to be like the road shoulders to like it's not really a bike lane because there's a lot of obstacles within this area so if you look at this one you can have you can see the open canals and you can see like the road shoulder which is being um utilized as a par parking space for this car and then instead of having this as a bike lane most of the bike the cyclists would share the road with um mo motorcycles or cars or sometimes even trucks so this is very problematic also and you can see that like this is a restaurant and then the parking is around this area so a lot of people will have to like merge into incoming traffic just to get to the parking area so that's also another issue and then you can see here that this area is supposed to be an open canal just like this here in picture number two but it's being um covered up by informal settlements so those are the issues in terms of like mitigation strategies I think the biggest issue would be the which is would be the um, soil erosion and the landslides within the area. I think there should be more like rip uh, Fortunately, there's an anti rock slide project which is which is currently being um, which is currently an, in under construction or under implementation. So um, in the last few weeks, I also noticed that there's been a drainage uh, drainage na project that is currently undergoing also this is usually at night so that doesn't cause any traffic during the day or afternoons and then um i heard there were also like uh, plans for road expansion but then i'm not sure how this would affect especially the um uh, there's a lot of built up structures around this area already so um another another solution might also be the um, putting up more public transportation since there is no, since jeeps don't really go up to Busay, they usually stop here at the Nivalina area. So having these would really make Bar Barangay Busay a better place to live in. So yeah, I think that's okay. it. Okay, very good. So um, so can you go back to your mitigation strategies? Let's see here. Road expansion, Barangay Hall, the center. Okay, so here. Um, so with regards to my previous question, do you think Barangay, do you think that the Barangay Hall is really the key building that needs to be constructed in uh, your area? I think so, yes, sir. Because there uh, along with the Barangay Hall is the like for education and healthcare, but I think Barangay Hall should be um the first like priority since i think having a like community center which the residents can go to to like address their concerns or needs would be very helpful in in like understanding what um the residents face on a day-to-day -day basis mm -hmm. yes and you can have the officials like go there and sort of prevent or kind of guide new developments yes okay so this is a very good presentation don't have much questions here especially since uh, it's very well presented so instead uh, you can um finish close up your screen faith thank you for that i'll write down thank your you, thank you here. sir 100%. i just want to highlight the i'll share i'm gonna put my share screen so we'll take a quick break from the presentations okay just hearing about the school that got um uh, damaged by landslides uh, twice <laughs> or like uh, within a very short amount of time really shows you that um, this area, uh, even though there are people living here, might not actually be, um, I'm not saying that uh, Faith and her family should move out, but this area isn't really conducive for uh, what you call uh, new development 
So maybe um, this is a sort of radical suggestion. Now, maybe instead of like thinking of more development here, maybe we should stop development here. And then why do I say that, sir? Why do you say that? It's really because it was pointed out in a 2015 study um, called the Roadmap for uh, Ur Sustainable Urban Development in Metro Cebu. Uh, we looked at the video for this. I think the, the, I'm not sure if it was this class or another class. Basta. So quick background, Metro Cebu is a group of municipalities and cities trying to like design for, um, trying to create a new sort of land use plan, zoning plan, comprehensive land use plan, whatever you call it, uh, for these municipalities for the future sustainable development of Cebu province. And then one thing that's highlighted here, which really can um, is emphasized, especially in Barangay Busay, that there is really a need for an urban limit. So over here, let me just make that bigger. Uh, so what is an urban limit? So it basically sets down where the city should stop developing. And you see over here, uh, Mandawe, Cebu, and you see this red line. And then if you compare that with Busay, Busay is clearly over that red line. <laughs> and then this is something that people like even way back the 70s pa, uh, 1970s I mean, we're already warning kanang uh, Cebu officials, whatever, the barangay people, uh, barangay officials, na dili na ta mag-develop on that further out because the slope is kuan, too steep. And then just hearing the stories of kanang uh, what's going on in uh, Faith's area, na, 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 na landslide ang school, Kaduha. Um, could you tell me, like, uh, Faith, how long uh, in between? How long was the first line, the first landslide and the second landslide uh, school? Uh, sir, I think it was within like the same year long. Within the same year long? Uh, oh, actually, okay. it wasn't the same. Uh, it's not the exact same location. It's like a few, maybe like, okay, the oh, yeah. first they, it was in the elementary moved. school and then they went to the sports complex. Yes. So the school ha uh, got affected by the landslide and then when they moved to the sports complex after a few months, I think, that one also got affected by the landslide. Mm -hmm. And it's during the rainy season on Amagkuan? Yes. No it was in no. 2015. Yes. So just about the same time this study was published. So wala na yung time mabuhat. So um, this is not really something that um, can be solved right away, especially with how governance is done in the Philippines in general. So I just want you guys to be aware of this issue na um, developments going further into our mountains is really supposed to be stopped but because uh, money is the is the final say in um, urban development in Subu city if you have enough kanang what they call what they call byrans uh, which is really unfortunate they can green light further developments if you see here uh, let me zoom in even more yellow is built up area and then dark red is like really dense areas and then you can see here naglapas na siya so this is closer to that's like north of lapu lapu i'm not lapu lapu mandawe so if we zoom out a bit that's probably like this one here like uh bakayan something like that uh pitos we're really kind of over na the urban limit currently and then with the rate that policy making is going We'll probably build even more before we finally stop so yeah just wanted to highlight that that um what is the importance of urban limits is really to prevent what's happening in uh, barangay busay so that people don't have to experience so many problems when we have our like rainy seasons and then uh yeah somewhere in asia urban limit i also sent this document to your uh, Facebook group and you can we can we'll discuss more on this because this is part of our syllabus month. Uh, we'll just go through the rest of the presentations tonight. Okay, thank you very much, Faith. So uh hopefully ma they'll they'll solve they'll have some kind of mitigating measures for us uh on effects of landslide in your area. Okay. Uh next we have uh Go Willie May. Afternoon sir. 
Good afternoon and good evening, Nagita. <laughs> good, 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 okay. Uh, go ahead. You can start whenever you're ready. And then announcement again. Um, if you're done, go ahead and answer the seat work uh, for the review of the one um, history of urban development in Cebu City. And then uh, yeah, one and Okay. So could it be here today? Yes, I can hear you, no problem. Okay. Um, so today I'll be discussing on the urban issues of Barangay Poblacion Pardo. So to start, Cebu province has a land area of 4,468 square kilometers, and it has 44 municipalities, five cities, and 1,066 barangays. So um, the population of Cebu province is around 3.3 million, and in Cebu City, it has a land area of 315 square kilometers. Um, the population of Cebu City grew from 347,000 to 964,000 in 2020. So we can say here that there is really an upward trend in terms of the population of Cebu. And for the barangay population Pardo, it has a land area of 4. 95 square kilometers. The population of Pardo fell from 12,406 in 1990s to 12,016 in 2020. So there is an in a decrease of 390 people over the course of 30 years. So with that, we can say that these issues that the Barangay Pardo is facing may have caused the decrease in population. So in terms of the physical issues of Barangay Pardo, um, its strength is that um, there are a lot of nearby establishments and also and also institutions. There there are um, churches, schools, cemetery, cemeteries, and also other small businesses. So that there's easy access to basic needs of the people and also for education purposes and also religi religious institutions. So um, we can see here that Barangay Pardo is mostly com mostly comprises of an open green space. Um, this is a mountainous area with like a subdivision and a golf course. And then in the lower part are where uh, are where the commercial establishments are. So with that we can say that um, the green spaces that the barangay have can prevent the negative health problems of the residences in the barangay. And for in terms of its weaknesses, Barangay Pardo suffers from bad drainage system and sewage system. And with that, it causes flooding in the area. And aside from that, also um, poor infrastructure that led to traffic congestion and also um, improper garbage disposal that led to the pollution and poor sanitation in the Barangay. So um, to summarize these problems, the main problem that Barangay Pardo is facing is flooding, traffic congestion, and pollution. So um, in terms of flooding, it is usually caused by the water runoff coming from the mountains in the Barangay. And there is not enough water catchment that receives water runoff through the mountain. and also, improper garbage disposal contributes to flooding. Um, so with that, this problem can be solved by diverting water runoff from the driveway through trenches or catchments in order to slow down water runoff from high elevations. Um, replacing concrete slabs with pavers, flagstones, or bricks also allow water to soak in between items. And then, in, especially in homes or in buildings, it is important to to install a cistern or in order to catch, catch storm water enough from roofs to lessen the amount of water that goes through the streets. And lastly, trees and plants are very important also to be used to absorb water and filter out the pollutants. And the second problem is traffic congestion. So um, Barangay Parda suffers from traffic in the main road due to the lack of traffic light. So this is the main intersection, sir, where all the cars meet up in one area from the north, from this side, and then this and this side, from the south, and from the subdivision. 
So it all just comes up in this main, air, main area. So traffic starts there and also sidewalks are also being used by street vendors and other businesses which became narrower than it already is. So here we can see a lot of street vendors on the sidewalks na good. So people will end up walking now on the streets. So in order to solve that problem, um, a construction of wider sidewalks would encourage people to walk instead of using cars and street vendors should also be designated in an area that does not disrupt the sidewalks. Traffic lights should be installed in intersections to minimize traffic and public transportation should be encouraged to minimize single occupancy of cars. And lastly, providing an exclusive lane for public transport, especially also for bike lanes and motorcycles. And then the last problem that Barangay Pardo is facing is improper garbage disposal. So it is mostly caused by the informal settlers, as mentioned, and also street the street vendors. They usually throw their trash on the street or in the canals. And garbage collection is only done twice a week for residential and business establishments. However, for informal settlers and street vendors, they don't have a designated disposal garbage disposal bin, which leads to the piling of trash on the sidewalks and then further being scattered into the streets during the rainy season. And so with that, it can be solved by a designation of disposal bins for street vendors and also for pu public use and reduce reuse and recycle materials and solid, solid waste. And lastly, the minimi minimizing the use of plastics in the barangay. So those are the problems that Barangay Pardo is facing. Hey, sorry, sorry, I was muted. Um, um, okay, I have like <laughs> my friend seems to be messaging me on Facebook. Anyway, so you mentioned these solutions, but they're all very kind of general, uh, public space related. Bro, what do you think is an architectural solution that can help um, Barangay Poblacion Prado, uh, Pardo? Sorry, like a specific building type. What do you think? I think, sir, usually like the mixed use, no commercial type, like since. Like, there are a lot of like business establishments like they're just like squatting on the streets they might they can they can use that as well and so since it's like a mixed use probably like apartments or rentable other rentable spaces mm. will also be used for housing so let's see here let's look at the can you highlight the population data a bit um, um just zoom in a bit, yeah. So let's see, decrease from 2015 to 2020. Um, so I'm thinking flood management, flooding is really your number one issue. So what about a, a what do you call this? What do you call it? A waste treatment, like a water treatment facility, something like that, instead of like more commercial, because like, the, the thing, the issue here for, this is another sort of like, um, uh, this is very good that you showed this. Um, the thing with the commercial and residential establishments, they would need an increasing population to be feasible. So just with the 2015 to 2020 NASA statistics, population it has been going down like consider considerably since Kuan Pa, the 2000s. So a new commercial area might not be the solution you're looking for. So something, uh, what do you call this? Something na maka deal with the flooding, maybe, yeah, some kind of um, new building type, na something to do with harvesting rain, specifically for rainwater harvesting, or like a sewage treatment facility to make sure na diha alatanan ilabay ang mga uh not just water but also kind of uh another like combination wastewater and solid waste management facility could be a good fit for barangay uh pardo uh, population pardo and and luckily it's within the canning 
urban limits, which we will discuss more uh, later on. So more na siya. Um, before, this is just for general for everyone. And uh, big thanks to Willemay for pointing this out. Na specifically, if you notice that your barangay or your area has a decreasing population, um, commercial and residential building types are not very kanang feasible. So uh, when you go to fifth year, when you propose that you want to do a commercial or residential area, you need to show them, the panelists, that the population in that area is increasing. Because if the population is decreasing like this, they might shut you down because like it's um, must dapat increasing on population basically. Okay, so that's not like a negative to you, Willamay. That's just something like uh, that's why we're doing these uh, presentations so we can see what kinds of principles go that we can apply to our different barangays. So thank you for that, Willamay. Very good presentation. All right, so let me record your. Seems like everyone has like perfect scores of presentation. <laughs> so I think the only reason I'm going to score is just like um, if I, if your map is more readable or like there's some problems with your map that I can I have trouble reading. Okay. So next we have uh, Gonzaga, Ryan. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Okay. So before you start, let me just stop recording so I can like cut it off into like 